and so would like to invite Eduardo now to come up here. There's just enough room to uh, receive the Gabriel. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father. Uh, thank you for all your words, kind words. I don't know what to say now, but uh, I'm very grateful to be here with all of you, and thank you to the Academy for this uh, award. Uh, well, first of all, I just want to say that I'm very grateful to this country for opening the door to my dreams. Um, God bless this wonderful nation that has changed my life. Uh, even though I grew up Catholic, uh, uh, my Catholic faith was not the center of my life. <clears throat> not because I didn't want to, but because I didn't know my faith very well. Uh, how can you love what you don't know? So I thought I, I, I thought I was a great Catholic because I was going to Mass once a year, uh, <laughs> on Christmas. And anyway, I thought I was a great Catholic because, you know, I told my friends, you know, as long as you don't kill anybody and you don't steal banks, I mean, we're okay, you know. I mean, we're not perfect, but, you know, we're doing our best and, uh, and somehow you justify yourself and, and, and out of ignorance you end up really living according to uh, other values, especially what uh, the media somehow, you know, uh, tells you uh, through films or television. And I realize that, uh, you know, especially young people, we live according to the standards of the media. We have this tendency and this inclination to imitate what we see in film or television. Somebody told me that the average percentage in, in America, uh, the average percentage in time between parents and children having meaningful conversations every day is only like six minutes a day. But in front of the media, it's more than eight hours a day. So we know who is educating uh, the youth. Uh, it's not parents, neither schools, it's the media. Now, there's nothing wrong with the media because the media is just a mean that if you use it well, you can make a difference. But if you use, an, if you use the media in a wrong way, you end up poison our society. So in my opinion, I was part of that. I was not part of the solution, I was part of the problem. I was poisoning our society by the project that I was involved. So because when I moved to Mexico City, as uh, Father Willie said, I was 18, 19 years old. I wanted to be an actor, I wanted to be a singer. And uh, so I started singing in a boy band for three and a half years and then telenovelas in Mexico and many other things. Um, so 10 years after, I realized that you know, I was very confused because I thought I had everything, but on the other hand, I had nothing. I was very empty. Something was missing in my life. And, uh, and I realized that I was not assuming the responsibilities that I had to assume because I forgot that as an actor, whether, you know, whether you like it or not, any project you are involved, uh, you are going to affect how people think, especially young people. So through my English teacher, I you know, opened my eyes by the grace of God and I made a promise to God that I will never use my talents again to do anything that will offend my faith, my family, or my Latino culture. And after I made that promise, I ended up not working for four years. So, uh, <clears throat> because all the, uh, you know, my agents were calling me, you know, and uh, they were giving me all these offers uh, to do, but they were not in line of the things that I wanted to do. So I started saying no, and no, and no, uh, until finally one day I met this uh, priest Father Juan, and I said, Father, I don't know what to do. Uh, I think uh, there's no room for me here in Hollywood. For the first time, I realized that the purpose of my life is not what I thought. I was not born to be a, a producer. I wasn't born to be an actor. I wasn't born to be a lawyer. Uh, I was born to know and to love and to serve God. Uh, we are called to be saints, and I'm 28 years old, and I just find out about that. So. How in the world am I, am I going to achieve that here in Hollywood? And I, and I feel like you know I'm alone here. So I made a decision. I'm going to the jungle in Hol in, uh, in Brazil, uh, in the Amazon, uh, uh, to the jungle to, to serve for two years uh, as a missionary, helping the poor. So maybe that that can clean my you know all the dirt that I had in my soul for all my you know my past. And he looks at me and where are you going? So I'm going to the jungle, Father, giving you a blessing. Uh, uh, I said, Eduardo, Hollywood is a bigger jungle. And, and I thought he was joking. I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I'm going there to serve the poor. He said, Eduardo, there's more poverty here. And I'm not talking about material poverty, but internal poverty. Uh, God opened your eyes here, not for you to roam, 
but to stay here, not to judge the darkness, but to be a light in the darkness. And so I think you should stay here. I said, but Father, I feel like I'm alone here. No, you're not alone. God plus one is an army, and it's more than one out there. You just haven't met them yet. But I barely can speak English, you know, well, even better. Because you know what? If it thanks, you know, happen, then you will know who did it, not you. So you should open a production company so you can have the, the power to control the, the morals, you know, the moral message of the, of the story. And, but ha stop crying. Just start going to Mass every day, and then you will figure it out. <laughs> so I, I listened to him, and he gave me a book called uh, Rome Sweet Home from Dr. Scott Hahn, and that book changed my life because after I read that book, I started going to Mass every day, and that, you know, is what really changed my life because after that, I ended up meeting two other crazy guys just like me who were going through the same conversion experience, and the three of us got together in my house, in the living room, and... Um, and we opened a production company called Metanoia Films with the mission of making films that will have the potential not only to entertain but to make a difference, elevating human dignity. And uh, we literally, we were broke, uh, we were producers, but just because we call ourselves producers, uh, but actually we were just having a little table and a sofa and that was it. <laughs> and uh, I remember one day, four years later, after I made that promise to God, I was in my room, in my bed, I didn't have money to pay my rent for the next month. My father thought I went crazy. I lost all my friends at that time, and, uh, but I had a lot of peace. So I lost everything, but on the other hand, I found everything that really matters in life. And I was, for the first time, I, I, I experienced true, true freedom. And uh, because, you know, uh, freedom is not to do whatever you want to do, but what you ought to do, to do the right thing. And, and I um, remember that day, I received a call from a producer in Miami, and he was telling me, I have this great project for you, Eduardo. I know that you want to do the, you know, these certain things, but here is very positive. It's you know, a few things that you have to do, but I mean, come on. You used to do those things before, and maybe this will you know, save you and, and you know, give you a, enough to maybe later do whatever you want to do. But now I think you have to do this. You have to make a living. So I, I find out that, that I had to compromise a little bit, and he said, it's just a little bit, just a little bit. And, you know, uh, for the first time I realized how weak I was, and I was about to say yes. I said, let me call you back, I hang up. And that's when I realized that in times of temptations, in times of, you know, confusion, uh, you get in your knees, you pray, and God give you the strength and the clarity and, you know, the power to say no to those things that will offend him. And so that's what I did, and I got the clarity. I called him back, and I said, thank you very much, but I can't do this. I, I wish I can, but I, I, I can't. And, uh, and I hung up, and I just felt like I started crying. I felt free, and then I received a second call from Father Juan, the one who told me not to leave. And he said, Eduardo, I'm here in, in Rome, uh, what are you doing? I said, I'm working a lot, Father. Thank you for all your advice. Uh, <laughs> things are going really well. <clears throat> and he said, you want to come to Rome tomorrow to meet the Holy Father, John Paul II? And I have, uh, I would be amazing. I don't even have money to pay for my ticket. I, I'm literally, I'm, like, I lost everything. I'm not complaining. This is great, great purification. <laughs> and uh, 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 this is part of, you know, the journey. But... I wish I can go, I, I can't, don't worry, I already have someone that will take care of that. So next thing you know, I was in Rome ho holding the hand of our Holy Father, John Paul II, and I was uh, one of the most beautiful moments in my life. I, I told him, Holy Father, we have a production company called Metanoia Films, please pray for us. He gave me his blessing, I closed my eyes, I had a rosary in my hand, I, I started praying, Our Father, I didn't want to leave, he gave me a second blessing. Maybe he thought he needs a double one or something like that. But uh, <laughs> after that, I went back home uh, and I met this wonderful family from Philadelphia, literally seven days after that blessing. And we told them uh, we have this movie, uh, at that time it used to call uh, Agape, and we changed it to Bella. If you, um, we're just uh, raising money and funds so we can go to New York and, and film this. Film, and we, we believe that maybe with this film we can save maybe at least one baby if it is the will of God from being aborted. So they wrote a check, gave it to us, went to New York, uh, 24 days. You know, we filmed this uh, movie 
came back to Los Angeles, edited, sent it to Toronto, got in Toronto. Nine days later, the movie wins Toronto. But the best part of Bella for me you know, was not winning Toronto. I mean, it was great, but the best part of Bella, uh, this little film that has changed the life of so many people, including my own life, is all the f uh, emails and letters and phone calls that I receive every day from young women who were pregnant and scheduled to have an abortion. And by the grace of God, after seeing the movie, they changed their mind and kept their babies. And until today, more than 1,000 babies have been saved uh, because of this little film. Uh, that's the ones that we know. Uh, only God knows how many more, and I hope thousands more. But even if it would be only one, it would be all worth it because life is not an accident. Life is sacred. It's a gift from God. And it